Hey, I'm Marigo, and this is the first video in my series on the basics of synthesis. If you are starting to feel limited by just using presets like preset sounds in Ableton Live or maybe presets on your favorite synth plugin like Serum, then these videos are here to help you learn the tools to start designing your own sounds from scratch and be able to tweak presets to get it to sound exactly the way that you like. Once you understand the basic concepts and building blocks of synthesis, you'll start to recognize and see all the same knobs, terms, um, abbreviations everywhere. So even if you're using tools that I'm not using in these videos, it should be able to translate to whatever synth you're using. We start with a sound source. In uh, most synthesizers, this is called an oscillator and just generates something like a sine wave. Next, we move to the amp envelope. Amp stands for amplitude um, or volume. And we use this to make sounds long and sustained or maybe short and plucky. We can do further adjusting with filters. And after that, we can use tools like LFOs and additional envelopes to further shape and design our sound. And lastly, apply some global effects like reverb, chorus, etc. We are going to break these components down one at a time and in great detail and showing a lot of examples, uh, starting with the sound source. The first part of synthesis generally is choosing a sound source. On most regular synthesizers, we're going to be working with something called an oscillator. A basic oscillator generates one pure tone at a time. For example, I have the wavetable device here um, generating a sine wave. The most common ones you'll see, the most common uh, waves you'll see is a sine wave, triangle wave, saw, and square. So on wavetable, we see them laid out in this sort of graph over here. And here I have just a little clip here. And I can just click and drag, moving, to select my sound shape. And as I kind of get in between the two, it's sort of blending those shapes together. So that's how this one works. But let's look at another one. Let's pull up Drift. So in Drift, we have OSC, Oscillator 1 and Oscillator 2. I'm just going to turn off Oscillator 2 for now and just start using 1. We'll talk about blending two together later. And just pointing out, we have sort of the same options, but it looks different, right? It's going to look different on every synth. So here we have a drop-down menu. And in this drop-down menu, we have sign, triangle, sort of a variation on triangle, like two different variations here, uh, saw wave, and then two square waves, one um, just where the uh, shape is slightly different, right? Not as symmetrical. And let's go ahead and just play. This is the saw. And as you work with these, you'll sort of get used to the differences in the tone, learning how each one sounds and when you might want to pull one uh, wave shape um, over another. Let's look at one more example here. We're going to grab meld. Now there's another software synth here in Ableton. And here we have our two oscillators, right? Top and bottom. And they don't, it doesn't say OSE or oscillator anywhere actually. So, you know, you just kind of have to know that that's what this is. So we'll start to recognize, oh, if I'm seeing these kind of shapes, then I'm probably in the oscillator section. We have oscillator A and B, let's turn off B. So we're just working with A. And now you see a similar layout to wavetable, right? Where they're kind of one on top of the other. And the way this one works is we have a shape knob. It's starting down here at the sine wave. And as I take the shape knob up, we're kind of scrolling up through the shape. So into triangle, into saw, and into square. Let's go back to wavetable. And all three of these synths actually had two oscillators that you can blend together. Well, wavetable is really visual, so I like using this to teach. Um, so here we go. Let's kind of bring it up more into like saw territory. And now I'm gonna turn on oscillator two, and we'll go to the second oscillator tab here. And now I can pick another shape. and see how that might change the tone. One other thing you can do when layering these two together is change the um, pitch of these. So let's say maybe we wanna make it harmonize with it. I'll kind of just, see now the two oscillators are playing different pitches. Let's just go an octave up, so 12 semitones.
And we can also adjust the volume, so blending in. Like if it's all the way down, we're just hearing oscillator one. And I can also blend in oscillator two. Maybe I don't want it all the way up. So this is the starting point, right, for pretty much all synthesis. And now in a synth-like uh, wavetable, we do actually get some more complex starting points, right, for our oscillator. So these are the basic shapes. You can even see it's in a category called basic shapes. Um, but if I check this uh, sort of collection of options out for our oscillator, let's go to like collection and try like olive. So you can see what, let's turn off two. So the cool thing about a wavetable synth is it has really complex um, uh, waveforms that can be used in place of just a simple sine wave, a square wave, you know, etc. So the sounds get more complicated, more more textured. And so that's just a cool thing about Wavetable is it has these kind of crazy options here. Okay, let's check out the sound source on a few plugins. So here I've got Massive X, which is a native instrument synth, software synth. And on this one, we have our oscillators right over here and over here. So this is oscillator one, and this is oscillator two. And again, we can like turn one off and just work with the original one. Here's all our sound source like options, right? That can be created by the oscillator. So under basics, you'll see sine, triangle, saw, square. That's what those abbreviations stand for. So now as I turn this knob, I can move from a, and it, you will see the visual here too. It's a sine wave, getting more triangle, getting more saw, and then into square. Just like Wavetable, we have, um, this is in fact a Wavetable uh, type of synth. Um, so like under Monster, let's see what we get. So see the, the shapes get more complex. Let's hear what this sounds like. So starting with like a triangle, lots of harmonics. Cool. And then again here, we can find where we change the pitch. So let's add a second one and layer it together. Here is gonna be like the percentage or the volume, I think. So all the way down, we're not hearing any of oscillator two, and then I can kind of start blending it in. And all the way up, whoops, we're getting both of them. And over here, I can adjust the pitch. So actually it already was at 12. Maybe I was messing with it earlier, but so at zero, oops, at zero. They're playing in the same octave. So I can change the pitch. There it's fifths. And maybe I want to go to octave. Cool. So even though it looks different on massive, I was still able to find my oscillator section and determine, right, change the shape. So here I've got another synth from Native Instruments called Super 8, right? This one's modeled after an analog synth. We've got oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. And then here we've got a mix knob and you can see it's like blue or red. So all the way to the left, we're only going to hear oscillator 1 all the way to the right, we're only gonna hear oscillator two. And if we're, you know, somewhere in the middle, it's gonna blend the two together. So they'll be at zero, I believe it's like, you know, 50, 50, we're hearing both of them equally. So let's go all the way to the left and start with oscillator one. So in this synth, you can see our shapes here. We've got sine, saw, square, and then we've got another square that's labeled sub. So if I turn these all down, we're gonna hear nothing. And then if I bring them up one at a time, I'm blending them all together to create, you know, a new sound. And here's, we'll hear that sub, which is pretty cool. Let's start bringing in oscillator two and maybe oscillator two, we'll take an octave up again. We can adjust the fine tuning to like detune it a little bit, cause that cool phasey effect. So 
in Super 8, instead of picking one from a drop down menu, we just use these sliders to combine, you know, different waves together to create a new sound. So in this synthesizer, that's the workflow here. So as you can see, it looks different on every synthesizer. And that's just a part of the workflow and what makes it fun to use different synthesizers, because naturally, by the way they're designed, you'll get different results. Let's look at one more example where instead of using an oscillator as a sound source, we are using a sample. So on this MIDI track here, I'm going to load on Ableton's Simpler, and then I'm going to find a sample to throw into it. So under my samples, let's see. Cool. So I'm going to drop this in and now I can play it on my keyboard. So in this case, I'm starting uh, with this sample as my sound source instead of an oscillator, right, generating a sine wave or something. I can use the start marker here to determine like where it actually starts. And I can also use the end marker to make maybe make it shorter. We have all the same controls. So in the next video, we're gonna cover envelopes. So you can see attack, decay, sustain, release, just like on our other synthesizers. So in this case, we're doing sound design or synthesis using a sample as the starting place. For our last example, we'll load up a device called Granulator. This is Granulator 3, the most recent version. And same idea here. In this one, the sound source is going to be a sample. But instead of playing the whole sample back, um, we're going to take tiny little moments, grains, seconds, milliseconds of it. And that is going to be our sound source, is these little tiny grains. And that's called granular synthesis. So you can see... Depending on where, de I love this device so much, depending on where I um, kind of focus in, right, the position, um, it will take grains from that part of the sample. So this is the same sample that we used in the simpler instance, but now um, what Granulator does is it sort of randomly plays little tiny pieces of audio in that um, selected region to create an awesome sound. I can have it scan a little farther apart. But here, just demonstrating to you that there are different types of sound sources too. So it's not just the oscillator. Um, in other devices and other softwares, you might be using different things as your sound source. So this is the starting place for synthesis, is picking your sound source. In the next video, we will talk about shaping that sound further with our amp envelope or ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, and release. If you learned something from this video, please drop a like um, and subscribe to my channel. There will be more videos in this series um, covering all those components of synths. Until then, happy music making.